everybody, welcome back to Taji's World of Books and welcome to another book recommendation video. Hey you guys, long time no see, welcome back. If you guys have been patiently waiting for me, I have been out for a couple of weeks. As I had mentioned, I had surgery on my legs and as a result, the surgery went well itself. Like there was no problem with the surgery. I have had some complications that are to be expected with the type of surgery that I had, and that is wound healing issues. So what that means is that my stu my stitches, sutures, um, opened up. And so not to be too graphic, because this is a book channel, but I had a gash about that big and about that wide open on my leg, and I freaked out because I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna lose my leg. <laughs> like, it was just crazy. And my doctor is like absolutely amazing. My doctor was like, we expected this, this is no problem, don't worry about it, it's fine. He cleaned it out, he restitched it, and um, sent me home. And I've been doing a lot of wound care. Oh my God, I am so knowledgeable. If we ever enter the zombie apocalypse, I totally know how to take care of wounds now. I've been doing a lot of wound care and making sure that it's very clean and um, well bandaged and changed and all of that stuff. So I've been focused on my healing and recovery. Um, today is the first day and that wound, I'm going back to see the doctor today and the stitch opened up a little bit, but not anywhere close to what it was before. The doctor expected that as well. And so we're going to handle each issue as it comes up, but I definitely think I'm on the road to recovery. Today is the first day that I'm actually walking around like normal. I've been hobbling around like it's been horrible. My husband was taking care of me. My son was taking care of me. They were making sure that I had everything I need. And then on top of that, <laughs> then my husband came down with COVID. Ah, FML. So we've been dealing with that. Um, thank God he is having no symptoms or very little symptoms, if anything. He is quarantining on the opposite side of the house. And so now I am thrown back into the wolves and taking care of my son and having to get him back to school and like trying to walk and like not do too much and take it easy. And so needless to say, I have not been you know, filming because of those issues. I have been reading, albeit very, very slowly, and really trying to read things that are just low angst and like something that I can just read and I don't have to really focus on and pay attention to too much. And it really will like, cause reading is an escape for me and it's something that I love to do and I wanna continue doing it. So I've been really taking it easy. So please bear with me. I think that it'll just be a little bit longer while I convalesce cause I miss you guys and I love doing this so much and I wanna continue with it. So I just wanted you guys to know that I have, you know, not stopped that I've been dealing with life issues cause life sort of throws curveballs and we navigate them and deal with them as they will. Um, I've been supplementing my reading with like binging on TV and that's something I don't typically do. And I watched for the first time, I never do this, I watched Keeping Up with the Kardashians the last season and then I watched the new season on Hulu, the Kardashians, and I have to say like, it's like my guilty pleasure, I'm absolutely loving it. So anyway, having said all of that, I'm gonna come to you with part two again of what to read while on bed rest because again, I want something low angst I want something that I could just thumb through really easy, enjoy, focus my attention on, and it can also serve as an escape. Now, let me say this. I haven't had my like, Mwah. I absolutely love this book. I loved everything I read, more or less. We'll talk about it. But I'm wondering because my mind is so focused on getting better and on healing and on recovery that I'm not enjoying my reading in as much as I traditionally or typically would. And I think that's to be expected. And the better I'm feeling physically, the more I start to enjoy the books that I'm reading, if that makes any sense at all. So everything take, you know, take all of that into an account when I present these sort of eight or so books that I have read while I have been convalescing. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first series that I wanna talk about is this is the Montgomery Brothers series by Laura Pavlov. I got this first book in the Reveal book box. And I what I did was, is I smartly just read this one and then decided I was gonna go ahead and get the other ones because I wanted to um, have the full experience. And I did like this first one a lot. Unfortunately, the latter books were not as good as the first book. In my opinion, I think these are all solid fours. They all are mid-level spice range. And that's the other thing, because 
because I haven't been taking notes and I haven't been, you know, doing my recording in the way that I typically do. I'm just going to kind of give you an overall um, summary of what the books are about. Okay, so these follow a different trope. They're all really good. Like I said, mid-level romance. So the first book in the series is Legacy and this is Ford and Harley. And Ford is the oldest brother and he is running a billion dollar company and Harley is a business entrepreneur. She wants to start a bakery that's going to be in a coffee shop in one of the buildings that the Montgomery brothers run and so she comes to them with a business proposal and he decides to take her up on his offer and it is an enemies to lovers trope and it is a solid four. The next book in the series is Peacekeeper and this is the middle brother Harrison and this is his story with Lancey and this is a um, best friends to lovers and a second chance romance trope and there is a lot of things miscommunication and things that you think you knew and think you understood and reasons and behind the scenes as to why things went down the, the way that they did but a lot of sort of groveling and reconciliation needs to occur in this book. This is a four out of five. And then the youngest brother and finally Rebel and this is Jack and Monroe's story and this is my best friend's sister or my brother's best friend trope and again with that comes lies and secrecy and hiding and trying to not be honest about and it's also a little bit of a enemies to lovers in the sense that like she doesn't really take him seriously because he's such a jokester and snarky and like is never to be like everything is always so light and free-hearted and he doesn't take anything really seriously so she doesn't expect that he's going to take her seriously either so this is a solid four so it's a fun series for sure to check out. The next series that I want to talk about is the Rosie Dannon and this is The Roommate and The Experiment. The Roommate, this is an oldie but goodie. This has been around, made its rounds on Book Talk, you know, like two years ago or something like that. I'm just now getting to it. It's super, super fun. I absolutely loved it. This is about a porn star and a princess that sort of kind of get together. When I heard that it was a porn star romance, I thought it was obviously going to be the female that was a porn star and was I surprised. And it is absolutely so fun because you're dealing with familial issues, you're dealing with mental health issues, you're dealing with two different types of people coming together and enhancing and bringing out the best, but also requiring them to face their own demons and requiring them to be honest and true to themselves and honest and true with what they feel for other people, what they feel for themselves and what they are willing to give up and sacrifice to be together. This book was fabulous. This was an absolute five out of five star. I loved it so, so much. And it's about stereotypes and it's about, you know, are you willing to put stuff on the line to be with the person that you love? And are you willing to be honest about what you feel? Like, it's just so good. It really is like a come to Jesus moment. I love, Rosie did a fabulous job with this book. So, so good. Five. And spicy, so spicy, especially because it's dealing with porn stars. So like the work that porn stars do, it's just fabulous. So then the, this is a companion novel. And this is about Naomi, who is the best friend of one of the characters in the previous book. And because that first book was so fabulous, I was expecting this to be phenomenal. And this just went, it fell so flat. Whereas that's like a absolute solid five out of five this is a three star it was so boring I was I did not care about Naomi Naomi is an ex porn star who is now wanting to become an educator and she's teaching sex ed and intimacy and partner intimacy w within a classroom setting and she's having a hard time marketing her product to universities and schools and so a Jewish rabbi um, decides that he wants to bring her on and have her you know teach intimacy at his synagogue and she does just that and I was just like I could give a shit it was so so boring and it was such a letdown in comparison to you know this particular book that I was just like what is the purpose of this and why am I reading it so yeah up to you if you want to try it the next book that I read was Broken Wing and wow this book is so so good this is about Gabriel and Sarah and so, man, and it's written by Judith James. And this is an oldie. This book was written like back in like two, 2008 or 2000 or yeah, 2008. And so it's, it starts off with Gabriel taking care of this young boy who is 
was stolen away. I think the boy's name is James. I can't remember, but whatever. I think his name is James. He was stolen and he was sold to a brothel. And Gabriel, it's clear that that was Gabriel's history as well. And so as a result of this, because this boy is so young, that he takes him under his wing and he refuses to allow them to defile him and sell him as a prostitute. And so any of the punishments that the little boy, I think his name is James, um, garners, Gabriel says, I'll take it on myself. Like, you're not going to harm this boy. And he does just that. Well, unbeknownst to them, James, the little boy, has two siblings and he is part of the nobility in English Tom and they search for him and find him in the brothel and so when they come to find him they pay to have his release but they but but James absolutely refuses to leave unless he brings Gabriel with him and so he's like I'm not leaving him and so the brother and sister have a conversation about it and they're like you know what um he did protect our brother they're like but he's a prostitute like he's seriously like this kind of guy is the guy that we want to bring home with us like really and the sister is like you know we have to do the right thing so let's make a contract with him for a year that he'll stay with us for a year to help James to acclimate and reacclimate into society and you know and then we'll see where things go from there and it really is Gabriel's story of his adventures of being in captivity of being free of seeking his own personal wealth. It's about his relationship. There is a love story that is in here as well. This is really classified as women's fiction, but I classify it as a romance. It is one of the best books that I have read in a very, very long time. Like it ranks up there with Outlander. It ranks up there with um, Pam Godwin's Sea of Ruin. You know, like if you think about sort of pirate stories, there is, there's another book that I think, oh, Dangerous Minerva Spencer, it's very similar in vain to those types of books. And I think if you love those books, then you will absolutely love this. It is a five out of five star. It is a solid, solid read. It's a fast read. I, I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting it to be this daggone good. And it was phenomenal. Really don't sleep on that. If you like historical romance, if you like women's fiction, if you liked any of the books that I mentioned, if you like pirates, if you like adventure, if you love romance, if you love like swashbuckling kind of, you know, being high at seas and like and having tumultuous seas and don't know if your partner's going to come back and all that ton of stuff, like it's all packed in here as well. But also with really strong, you know, personal relationships and forging friendships and working together and, you know, against all odds, like every Everything it delivers in so many ways and I absolutely love this cover as well so don't sleep check it out Judy Jean the next book that I read that I was like I loved it so much is Descent by Sam Mariano and whoo, let me say that this is dark there are trigger trigger warnings for days in this so you need to check out the trigger warnings and be prepared when you go into it like and I heard I think it was I think it was um, Jen from the book refuge that described this as like if you take um, Carter from Carter Mahoney from untouchable and like have him grow up and have him be untethered it will result in this particular character here in this book and so this is about Calvin and Haley. So the book starts off with Haley is at a, she's out with friends and doing her thing and she's at this like, you know, whatever, doing her things with her friends. She's dating this guy. This guy like, you know, is a jerk off and he calls her and he's like, hey, I need you. It's really important. He tries to reach her. She ignores him. He tries to reach her again and then he calls her and she answers the phone. He's like, I need you to come. I'm in trouble, blah, blah, blah. Come to this particular club. And she does that and the fuckery sort of ensues from there. I don't want to give too much away, but I'm going to say that there is dubious, there's non-consent, there's dubious consent, there's all other kinds of tropes, like I think you need to check it out, but it also, in the heart of this, this is a dark romance, and it is, talk about alpha heroes, possessive, dominant, you know, captor captive situation. It is just, it's, you're going to descend into the darkness. They meet at this particular club, and I can't remember the name of the club. I think the club is called like, rapture or whatever the club is called and so there are multiple books that are written in this world and you could tell by the covers of them that they're all sort of what they link together is the club that they're at and that particular club serves really specific fetishes and really specific kinks and I don't want to give this kink away because it just you could just need to go into it blind and just read it but no it's dark if you have trigger warnings you probably should check out the trigger warnings but if you don't have any trigger warnings 
read away, read away. I gave this an absolute five out of five star. It was fabulous. I loved it. I was like page turner, couldn't put it down. I went ahead and got the other books that are in this world because I definitely want to read more in this world. I want to see what's going on. But other than that, you guys have your reading because it's so good. All right, so the last two books that I want to talk about are um, Jennifer L. Armitrout books. I had them on my TBR. I'm not going to spend too much time, not on my TBR, but I had purchased them way back when, when I was reading fantasy romance. Um, and Jennifer L. Armitrout, I was really enjoying her, so I purchased these as well. And they are, you know, read them at your own peril. They're um, young adult, um, they're, so they're YA or new adult. This one is about Ella and Ella is attacked and they are trying to discover who her attacker is. This is written in a, like a scream-esque kind of fashion. It's set in a small town, West Virginia. All of Jennifer L. Armitrout are all set in like a small town, West Virginia. And she's attacked one night from leaving a party. It's trying to figure out what's happening. There are multiple suspects, multiple people that she's narrowing down. People are slowly dying and disappearing in this small town. It's scream in, you know, in that, in that sense. Um, it was all right. It was a read. It wasn't particularly good and it wasn't particularly bad. I gave it a three out of five star and there is the spice is like a one, if not a zero because it's YA. And then this one is new adult and this is scorched. Jennifer L. Armitrout, and this is a, a follow-up to Frigid. I probably 10 years ago, five years ago, would have absolutely loved it. Today, I was like, hmm, I was kind of bored. It's a college age. Um, it's a companion novel to Frigid, and this is one of the best friends of the heroine in Frigid. They are in college. They're going on a weekend trip to the mountains to like snowshoe, I think, to go sneak skiing. And um, the main character here, it's about Tanner and Andrea. And Andrea's life is spiraling out of control because she has an alcohol addiction that she has refused to acknowledge. And Tanner has been sort of, he's a player, he, you know, on the sidelines, he's a player. And he's been interested in her, but has never really pursued her because he's never really taken her seriously. And everything reaches a crescendo when Tanner's drinking really spirals out of control. And it's about whether or not she can overcome her substance abuse, not really substance abuse, alcoholism, and be the person that she knows that she is, you know, has the potential to be if she could just manage her drinking. And so overall, I gave it a three, maybe even a 2.75. I was bored to tears, didn't give a shit. I was like, why am I reading this? So you guys, that is all that I have for today. That is everything that I have been reading while I am on convalescing. And now I think what I'm gonna do is go back to my book series recommendation videos. I have a series that I wanna recommend to you and that'll be my next video. And I think I'll be back on track. We'll see how things go, fingers crossed. And that is really all that I have for today. So thank you so much for joining me. And if you like what you're seeing, please hit that like button and hit that note bell notification button so you can be notified every time I upload a new video which is generally three times a week when I am up well and functioning and doing my thing and other than that that's all that I have and I look forward to speaking with you guys next time and please do a little heart note like emoji or put a little emoji down below if you have stuck with me through the entirety of this video I'd love to see who has done that I would really appreciate it and give me comments so we could chat back and forth because I miss you guys so anything that's it. Bye.